Hey guys, and welcome back to Mad About Skin. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Here at Mad About Skin, we're passionate about helping you to get the most out of your skincare. So if you haven't already, now's a fantastic time to click that link below, subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell, and you won't miss out on any of our amazing future content. Now in today's video, we're gonna be doing another full brand review. In this series, we take apart a full brand. We look at each product that sits below that, the good, the bad. We look at the pros, the cons, and we ultimately work out which of their products you want in your skincare and which you need to toss and never a look at again. Today we're focusing on the Simple Skincare Protect and Glow range. For those of you that have been with this channel from the start, you'll know I've probably never mentioned Simple Skincare. That's because, let's face it, it's a bit on the boring side. I don't like to shade companies, but this is a company which hasn't reformulated or done anything different with their packaging or anything for about 20 years. Yes, skincare can and should be simple but not boring. And it is just a bit of a boring product line. There's no active ingredients in half of what they do and the packaging doesn't excite me. I just, nothing about me makes me want to buy. And so I've really just avoided it as a, as a product line. However, they've recently come out with this, which is their Protect and Glow range. The packaging is new. This is their new launch, first new launch for like 15 years. And it's popped up everywhere here in the UK. So I thought, right, I'm gonna get my hands on it. The packaging has intrigued me. The focus on um, more active ingredients also intrigues me and I'm on it. And I'm gonna get it, try it and see for you guys whether it's worth the splurge. Simple started out quite a few years ago, really just as taking skincare back to basics. Removing the fragrance, the color, the things that can create sensitivity and allergic reactions in our skin are just taking it right back. Getting rid of some of the parabens, the sulfates, basically clean beauty before clean beauty was a thing. They don't use the clean beauty brand, which I really admire because there's no international standard and it's a marketing ploy. So they've never gone down that route. They are cruelty free, which I think is fantastic. And the price points are really accessible. Usually found in the drugstore or at supermarkets, internationally available, and they do a full range of products. So I'm gonna be focusing on this line because the rest, Still boring, but this really intrigued me. So we're gonna be focusing on their Protect and Glow range. The thing that really drew my attention is they say it helps protect against blue light radiation. Well, for those of you who don't know what blue light radiation is, it's a bit of a fad at the moment where people are concerned that the light that is emitted from our screens, our computers, our phones, our iPads, whatever, our technology emits a blue light which can penetrate deeper into the skin than UVA and UVB radiation and can do damage, impact the glow and the luminosity of the skin and create long-term damage. The science on this is a little bit sketchy, so I'm not gonna dismiss it because I think there's more science, more scientific studies need to happen before I'm fully set on the damage which it can do, but there is some science out there to support this. I think it's a little bit of a craze and it's gone a bit wild. Everybody worried about their blue light radiation. Personally, I don't worry about it. I get on with the rest of my day. However, if we can do things to protect against it, why not? Let's incorporate it in our skincare routine. And this is what this line claims to do. So we'll get into that a little bit um, as we go through each of the products and I'll do my summary at the end. All of these products are ranged between five pounds to 15 pounds. That is up there for simple. They're usually a little bit cheaper, but that's still very much drugstore. You're not gonna be forking out a lot on these products. In the US, again, it's a comparable um, sort of 10 to $25 price point. So again, not cheap, 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 but it's certainly not an expensive product. Let's start with the Detox and Brighten Face Mask. This, in case you're interested, I'm gonna be doing a live stream later on today, 6 p.m. UK time. So Fridays at six, we slap on a face mask. Face mask Fridays, we chill, we chat. So join me um, and answer all your questions at 6 p.m. UK time this evening. And I'll be using this as my face mask. I've used this a couple of times and I actually really like it. So this is vegan friendly, which is absolutely fantastic. It's got vitamin E, it's got vitamin C, and it's got ginger root in there. So it's packed full of brightening agents and um, really good antioxidants, which I absolutely love. And it's got kaolin, which is fantastic for balancing the skin's oil levels. For me, this is a five pound fantastic life-saving product. I love a clay mask because I'm oily and I need to remove some of that excess oil from my skin. If that is you, you will love the Detox and Brighten Clay Mask. Absolutely fantastic. It hasn't got any fragrance, hasn't got any colorant, which often face masks can. So it's perfect for the sensitive, yet still a little oily amongst us. And I, that is a niche, but it's definitely um, it's definitely out there. That skin type is definitely out there. Look out for this mask. Five pounds here in the UK, $7.50 in the US, so a really good price point. And um, if you want a mask, I'd say you probably get four applications out of this, so like a pound a go. That's really not bad. 
Do I see instant results where you can check back tonight and you'll see it in action? I think I did see some marginal balancing of the oil. It was a pleasant, um, it has a pleasant smell to it, even though it's not fragranced. And I actually really like the product. Did it brighten my skin? Maybe at the margins, did it detoxify? No, because detoxifying is a bit, again, a bit of a marketing gimmick. Yes, it drew out some of the impurities in the skin. Yes, it balanced the oil, which is really what I was looking for it to do. I enjoyed this product and I would definitely, definitely be using it again. Will I repurchase it after this? Yeah, I probably will. I think it I think it is a good enough product with considering the price point that I would give it a 7 out of 10. So we're off to a really good start. One thing, they say the whole line protects against blue light radiation. Not sure what's in here that's doing anything for blue light radiation. It's a mask, so maybe I don't expect it, but I will just call that out. I'm not sure really what's in here that's going to be delivering that. Then they have, and I'll leave an image of this because I did buy this for a number of reasons. This is the Express Glow Clay Polish. So very similar to the mask that I've just shown. It's got the kaolin in there. It's got the vitamin C and it's got the vitamin E. So you've got your antioxidants, you've got your ginger root. Also has bamboo extracts in there, which adds a gritty texture and polishes the skin. I hate, hate manual exfoliation. This is quite a harsh manual exfoliation. For me, I don't think you need it. This mask, absolutely great. I think the addition of the bamboo to make it a polish is just a real unnecessary step. You could risk damaging your skin, creating micro tears. I just don't like this. And I think I'd give this product a firm pass. This is a zero out of 10 for me. The reason for this is there's no need for it. You can just get this product and it's fine. If you want a manual exfoliation, there's just better ones out there. This is quite rough, quite abrasive. I feel it's a little bit of a lazy product that they just wanted a bit of a scrub thrown in there. So they've thrown it in. I don't know whether it's a mask or a scrub, it doesn't really say. Again, there's nothing to really deal with that blue light that they keep going on about. I, I'm not sure. This is a firm pass for me, zero out of 10. It's slightly more expensive than this one as well. I, I didn't get the point of the product. However, we're, we're still, we're cracking on. We are 50% success, 50% failure. So I think it's even, even so far. Now we're moving on to the Radiance Booster SPF 30. Leave an image of this. This is the best seller from this product line. I can understand why. So it claims to be a um, lightweight moisturizer and an SPF in one. There's nothing revolutionary about that, let's be honest. We've all been used, we expect our moisturizers to have an element, um, our SPFs to have an element of moisturization in them anyway. So there's nothing innovative or new in this. But I do like the fact that it comes in an oil, a dry oil formulation, which is really nice because it does give that light moisturization and it's a different technology that you don't often see in SPF. So that's really good, great for the face. It's dry, so it's non-comedogenic. So it's suitable for people that do have oily or acneic skin. So I like that. It's got algae oil in there. This is what they claim is a powerful antioxidant that's gonna help prevent some of the oxidative stress caused by that blue light technology. So first product in this line that actually is doing something to deal with that blue light technology. So ding, ding, ding on that. They've actually started to deliver on that. It's got the vitamins C and vitamin E in there. It doesn't say any of the concentrations on there and there's no tingle. So the vitamin C is gonna be fairly weak. So I wouldn't use this as my brightening serum. I think you still need a vitamin C on top of this. But it has those antioxidants in there. It has the ginger root in there. It has the algae in there. So it's just antioxidant powerhouse. And plus the SPF 30, which is fantastic in a really nice formulation. This is a really, really nice product. It's pricey. It's the most expensive at £15 here in the UK. And I don't think you get a lot of product for your money. It's an SPF. So my, while a lot of people say it's an oil, so I won't use much, you have to use a significant amount to get the right level of, of SPF protection that it says it affords. So don't scrimp on it. If you're going to use it, use it and make sure you use it as your SPF. I liked it. I still am not a huge fan of oils because I am naturally oily, so I do still psychologically not enjoy that oil consistency on my skin. But this product was really good. I can understand why it's the best seller. And if you are looking for an oil-based SPF that is light, that has some antioxidants built in that are actually gonna do something meaningful, I think this is a really good option for you. I'm gonna give it an eight out of 10 because I love the antioxidants. I love the consistency. I love the SPF. It's the right strength of SPF for me. I do worry that some people won't use enough, enough of it to get that 30% SPF, but really that's for the user discretion. It is very clear on the back how much you should use. So I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt on that. And I quite enjoyed this product. It's not right for my skin type because psychologically I don't like that oil consistency. But if you are anything other than super oily, I think this could be a really good option for you. 
The hydration level you get from this moisturization is what it says, light. You're not getting anything near an occlusive moisturization experience. If you are very dry, this is not gonna cut it for you, but there's no reason you couldn't use this on top of a moisturizer that you've already applied. Um, in that sense, it would work. Um, I think you'd be doubling up, but it's, it's certainly an option for you. So I like this product. I'm giving this one an eight out of 10. Then we've got the Triple Protect Moisturizer. This is basically the last product that I've discussed, but in a cream formulation. Really nice, it comes in along, I'll leave you an image of it there, it comes in a really nice tube. Now, I didn't buy this one because it's basically the same product and I wanted to try the oil. The oil is where I think the innovation is, the algae oil, I'm really interested in, I think that's a great antioxidant and a moisturizer, so I love this. This is just in a cream base. It's got hyaluronic acid in there, it's got vitamin C, it's got vitamin E in there, it's got the SPF 30. Again, relying very heavily on the antioxidants as the thing that's gonna protect you against the blue light that they say that is the key real differential in this line. Um, but there's no reason to say that wouldn't work. I like the texture. It's slightly more hydrating than the oil version. Is it really much different than a normal SPF? I don't think so. Loads of SPFs have a cream consistency and vitamins E and C. And so I'm not really sold on this being any different to say like a, a normal cream SPF that you could buy at the drugstore cheaper than this. You don't get a lot of product in it, so it is reasonably pricey. And I think actually there's nothing innovative in here that makes me want to buy it. The oil one, absolutely. I could see the innovation with the algae oil there. I'm on board with that. This one I think is just a little bit boring and a bit samey. It'll work. It does what it says on the tin, but I think you can get cheaper products and more established products at the drugstore still. I didn't think we needed another cream SPF with added antioxidants in the market. I think it's quite a crowded field. So I'm going to give this one a 6 out of 10. Certainly not bad, but it's not exciting. I don't get excited by it. Um, and then for finally, we have the Rest and Reset 72 Hour Cream. So unlike the others, this doesn't contain any SPF. Do I think that's an issue? No, I don't think you want all your products to um, contain SPF as long as you're mindful of that and then you can add your SPF on top of it. It's got vitamin C and E and this contains a prebiotic. So prebiotic, a lot of people think yakul and those little drinks that you take in the morning, that's probiotic, very similar. It helps to um, support some of the natural functions of the skin. It can support with the skin's defense barrier and the barrier function of the skin in general. It's a reasonably new technology. Am I sold on prebiotics in skincare? No, but they certainly don't do any harm and some of them can add beneficial bacteria and um, help with some of the na skin's natural defenses. So yeah, not a bad um, thing. I don't like the title of this 72 hour cream because you never keep a cream on for 72 hours. So what is the point? Any cream you're gonna be washing off after 12 unless you really don't wash your face in the evening, which you definitely should, uh, but you're gonna be washing it off after 12 hours. So I don't know what this 72 hour malarkey is all about because nobody's gonna keep their, you know, keep their cream on for three days. I guess what it's trying to convey is that the benefits are felt long after the cream. That's just not gonna happen. You know, this is a wash on, wash off product. This is put on, wash off product. So the second you wash your face, the benefits are gonna have dissipated. So I'm not sure sold on that. It's just a bit of a gimmick. I like the prebiotic. I like the consistency. It was non-comediogenic. There was no unnatural fragrance in there. Um, it, the vitamin C and E, whilst it didn't sting, so clearly it's in high concentrations, it definitely is there and it's nice to have that antioxidant. I think you're using the vitamin C in all of this line as an antioxidant rather than a brightener because it's not there in the strengths to deliver a meaningful brightness, but it was a pleasant um, product. Could it use work as a night cream? Absolutely. Is it worth the price? Yes. You know, it's not a high price. Here in the UK, it's eight pounds. So you're looking around the $12 point. So actually a really good price for a night moisturizer. So I have no issues with it. I just don't think it's very exciting. So those are the pro those are the things. What do I think overall? Well, definitely, if you want to tip your toe, dip your toe into this line, I would definitely recommend you try out the SPF brightening oil, the Factor 30 oil. That really, really hit the nail on the head. I think it was innovative. I like the algae oil. I thought it was something different. I like the consistency and the texture and the price point was really good. The rest of it, I, none of it really excites me after having used it. I think the main problem with this, if I was to sum up, the main problem with this line is it's kind of been done before and it's trying to deliver too many things. They're relying on the antioxidants to deliver the protection against the blue light, which is absolutely fine and I think is a reasonable assumption and would work to some degree. But antioxidants aren't exciting. You could buy a Q10 cream from the Inkey List and that's your antioxidant. You don't need all of this. You could buy, and you know, the e EUK134 from The Ordinary. That's an antioxidant. You don't need all this in your life. I think it's overcomplicating antioxidants and really is all is 
all it's really delivering is that antioxidant. I don't like the fact that they're, they're saying brightening is that that's their tagline. It's brightening. It's glowing. It's brightening. This is going to deliver you that luminosity that you want. How? Because fundamentally, it's got vitamin C in it, which will do some brightening around the periphery, but it's certainly not in a concentration that will deliver it in a meaningful way. So I'm not sure how they're claiming that this is really going to do anything meaningful for the brightness and the luminosity in the skin. I used all of these products. I noticed some marginal difference, but nowhere near my four pounds L-ascorbic acid by the ordinary, which you could just use and deliver a quicker result than all of these. The consistency is nice. It's perfect for people with sensitive skin that don't want to have that um, colorant and that added fragrance in there. It's cruelty free, so it ticks all those boxes. I say positives. The pros are all of the formulations were really easy to apply and understand. I like that. It does make them accessible as products. The price point is definitely there. It's drugstore. It's affordable. And I really like that. They've taken out a lot of the nasties. So it's kind of clean beauty without having to buy into the hype of the clean beauty and paying the price as a result of it. So I really enjoy that. And I am glad that Simple have come up with a new range and been a bit innovative because they've been very stale for a long time. So props to them for including some antioxidants in there and just mixing it up a little bit. I think that's really good. In terms of the negatives, I think this is promising more than it's going to deliver. Um, it's not going to deliver meaningful brightening in any way. Um, there's no real thing. The, the vitamin C isn't going to be a strong enough um, concentration to deliver that. So I'm not sold on that. It is a great antioxidant, but I think you can get antioxidants cheaper and without having to have all of these products packed full of antioxidants. I like the SPF, but I do worry that people aren't going to be applying enough of these products to get the SPF that's advertised on the product. It's not the product's fault. That's us as a consumer. We need to make sure we are applying enough. But I don't think that's that clear on the product. So I'm not huge on that. I don't think fundamentally this is a particularly exciting product line. I personally would stick with buying an off the shelf antioxidant. The Q10 um, serum by the Inky List is absolutely fantastic. The EUK134 by The Ordinary, brilliant. There's loads out there. You don't need to be spending money on this range and over complicating your antioxidant game. Antioxidant will help prevent blue light damage as well as the oxidative stresses which come from pollution and come from um, UVA, UVB light. So, I'm just not really sure on this. I'd love to know. Read me to filth if you think Simple is a fantastic product line and I've just been horrible about them. Leave a comment below. This is not a bad line. If you notice, all of them scored by that one product, the Polish, all scored the five, six, seven, eights. That's, you know, it's better than average. I don't think that's a bad scores. I just don't think they're overall an exciting product. I'd love to see people, I think there is a gap in the market where people are stepping into skincare and want an accessible product as their first like moisturizer or the first, these will be great options. For anyone that's well versed in skincare and knows what they're doing, I think there's easier ways to achieve it and achieve better results than these products. Leave me a comments below. I'd love to know what you think. Obviously, this is um, a full brand review. So let me know if there's any other brands that you want me to feature i'd love to and please 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 guys come and join us 6 p.m tonight we are going live answering your questions and slapping on this very mask which is definitely the standout standout alongside the oil of this line slapping this on so you can ask me any more questions you want about this um, brand tonight and i will happily answer them for you 6 p.m uk time be there and join us um, for an amazing chit chat hope you really enjoyed this video guys and i'll see you in the next one wherever you are in the world take care bye